Hi there, this is just gonna be a quick video. A lot of people have asked me how do I do calibration with this, and there's other videos out there that go into more detail about calibrating Alex Mos gimbals, but I'll just give you my quick overview on it. This is true whether you've got a quadcopter gimbal, one of these handheld ones, a big DSLR rig, they all kind of work the same way. There's two types of calibrations that you can perform. One is for the accelerometer, and that's what basically measures the forces on the, on the gimbal, and the second is for the uh, gyro. The gyro tries to measure the orientation uh, of, the, of the gimbal. So you can do both. Most of the time I only do the accelerometer calibration. That tends to fix most of the issues I have in the field. So we'll go through it with this. You power on the device. Uh, everything looks good. If you weren't happy with it for some reason, it was leaning off to the side, get it to some place where you can hold it nice and firm and then press the button to in initialize the calibration mode. It should sit there for a couple seconds, and then once it's done, you'll feel the motor re-engage, and you can lift up and see if it looks like it's steady. Now, you can see this one's kind of acting a little crazy. Sometimes, try turning it off, turning it back on, and you may find that that actually tends to make it work, you know, perfectly. Uh, the other thing you can also do is try running the calibration more than once. Generally, I just turn it off and on. That tends to solve it almost always. But in some rare cases, I have to run the calibration more than once. Generally, it twice is more than enough. Now, there's also what they call advanced calibration for accelerometer. And with that, I really only recommend when you have it on your computer. But basically, what you do is disable the motors. And then what you're going to have to do is hold this in, in a bunch of different orientations. Basically, all of the six orientations of it. So looking forward, looking up, looking down, left, right. So each surface gets faces up at least once. You, the only real trick with this is that your first calibration needs to be it in its normal orientation, looking forward, doing whatever it's doing. So that can help get you a little bit extra, uh, you know, extra quality out of it. In general, I don't find it that necessary. I find the normal calibration works fine, especially if it, the advanced calibration has already been performed on it in the past. Now the second one is the gyro. The gyro you can do in the field, but I almost never do. I usually do it when I'm at home. And with the gyro, it's almost exactly the same as the accelerometer, except you just really have to be careful to make sure that there's no motion at all with the thing. So once again, I disable the motors from the GUI and then run the gyro cal calibration there. Uh, you can always run these more than, you know, more than once if you run into problems. There's nothing really can go wrong. And uh, hopefully I'll help you get the best that you can out of any of these devices.